Beings from all planes, welcome. I am Shreya. Blin. Kellogg. Oma. Thessaly. Zika. And I'm your DM, Ethan. Welcome to Venture Forth. Previously, you all had sailed your way past Warwall Harbor into a river towards the Venville Rise. You had sailed on a boat captained by Paston Broadhammer, and after a successful night's watch and a viewing of a dragon turtle and some triton um, fishing during the night, you continued your way up the river. Now, finally, you are at the end of this river that leads into a well-traveled path that goes along the base of the Venville Rise where you are heading towards Shrya's tribe. So, as you are all continuing on this path, Shrya, I believe you are continuing your conversation. Uh, plain of air. Uh, we're not even told about it until we reach a certain age. Until we've developed a, a sense of our five senses and uh, and our sense of, of movement for the plane itself uh, demands it constantly if you are to exist there. Uh, the, the elemental plane of air is not simply the endless sky, as you may imagine. It is a maze of gusts, currents, vibrating temperatures. And yet, there is a simplicity to the tides of the winds. There always lurks the threat of a coming storm. The fibers of the wind can both lift you to heights of bliss, or, if not navigated properly, into the deepest confusion and despair. I've been told through legend that existing there feels like you are on the inside of all things, and yet one with none of them forever descending into a moment that unites as well as disbands. It's this very thrill that the elders miss, that they hunger for in the legends. It's almost like they're addicted to a ghost, a ghost of a life that they may have once had. And now, now they think themselves better the traditions that we carried on has gone, like I said, from reverence to a kind of idolatry, which makes so little sense because there's so much inconstance in the elemental plane of air that in a way they've rallied around that it is this singular thing, which is to misunderstand it completely. They have this mad thirst to be closer to it to what it may give them, to what it may do to strengthen them. As if the world around them that they find themselves in now could never be enough. That's why I left. I didn't want to associate with that mad thirst for more. I wanted to seek out the glory and the magic and the abundance that lies in the world around us. The world that each of you come from a different part of. But if we can inhabit that sense, if each of us can put forth a, a kind of knowing and a kind of understanding of that kind of mad pull toward the chaotic winds, that we crave that thing, that it has in uh, such ease and simplicity on the other side of that portal that I think we could convince them that we are there to aid them. Do all of them act this way? Every single one? It's interesting that you bring that up. The tribal chieftain 
there is a sense uh, among those who aren't as spiritually inclined in the tribe that an embrace of uh, our more avian instincts that we share with the other winged beings of this world that portion of the tribe wants to hunt wants to nest wants to carry out life in a simplistic way it is the shamanic wing of the tribe the ones that are more in touch with the magics that have carried down and passed down that tradition that goad and use their their abilities to wow and mesmerize the other segments of the tribe that without that without that trance as it were would probably mimic the behavior of the natural birds and other winged beings of this world. I would say the shamanic portion of the tribe is in the minority, but their influence is outsized indeed. And they're allowed to coexist peacefully? Yes. Then why did you need to leave? Why didn't you just become part of the the shaman? The shamans drew their strength from the wind itself and the energy that pulses from the elemental plane of air. Legend had it that when the portal was originally closed and Elbor stopped being a kind of exotic place for those of my kind to take a break and be away from the elemental plane, almost like a vacation of sorts, what the civilizations would call it here. The whispers that you may have heard from the trap I laid, what courses underneath the ground, and what I discovered in one very special cave. There was a portion of my kind that spoke to the magics of this world and could listen. It was different from the magics that emanated from the plane of air, and that was a threat. There was a kind of splintering of magical philosophy within the tribe, and that was the magical philosophy and the whispers and and the place that I draw my power from still to this day. The whispers that course through me and through what moves through me. And as I lift up, uh, and as I say move through me, I lift up the staff and the crystal uh, briefly pulses and for a s- split second, you see um, kind of those, those geometric currents uh, briefly connect to the portions where I had laid the traps uh, wisp out kind of like a laser into the distance toward the mountains and uh, one pulse uh, flashes near the wood the Brosby wood and you hear a kind of <gasps> like briefly so uh, a portion of your people found a, a new um, thing to idolize am I understanding that correctly not idolize the those who idolize the magics of the wind distrusted us, wiped us out one by one. To those who glorified the return to the plane of air, those who got in touch with the magics of this world were no different than the Kaldurian invaders, were no different than other beings of this world that they so desperately wanted to escape. So there's almost like two tribes now? Well, there was. Most of the people of my tribe who who liked and could commune with the magics of this plane have uh, mostly been, their lights uh, have mostly been extinguished. So, while Andel, Ganbaldir, and Kaldor warred over old gods and new gods, your people warred over the wind and the earth. Yes. That is a very apt way to put it. These things have a symmetry to them. Strikes me. When you left Shreya, do you not feel a kinship to those you left behind? Those that remained? Of course. I miss them still to this day. What few I had left connected to me. And I didn't say goodbye, or it would have been too hard. But as I made my final descent, as I was told if I ever set foot in that land again, 
that I would be most unwelcome. I thought to myself, if I were to make a return, it would be such a return. It would be a return so that I could bring something back to the tribe to attempt to unite them as opposed to divide them. And I do believe that traveling with all of you, I've I found that to a degree. Or I think I know that after being with all of you, I've come to understand that isolation is but one path, and it is a path of fear. I'd lost my patience in that time, as I had first left with any kind of dance of interaction with other beings. But it was when I first laid eyes on this one, and I pointed to Flynn, <laughs> and then met you, and then you, and the very large one who accompanied you, <laughs> and then the two of you, new friends. I understood, fighting by your side, and what I will always know now is this divinely civilized concept I've come to know as hope. And I hope, myself, that in bringing this back to the tribe, perhaps I can unite more than I can divide. Well, may the uh, wind be at our backs and the earth under our feet to accomplish such a task as we've seen from this this war of the peoples of Elbor. These divides are not so easily mended. That's true, they are not. May your sentiments guide our purpose. And I just look um, warily up toward the Van Bell Rise. Right. And as you all continue to travel, you are soon met by the main road that takes you along the base of the Venbo Rise. And as you begin to travel along this road, now all of you are able to sort of keep up with Seeker and his pace, as now some of the snow has cleared and you're able to move at a normal pace. And as you're moving through, the snow covers most of the road, but at certain points you can just see the snow as not quite built up just enough. And just through onto the dirt, you can see footprints. Dozens and dozens and mm. dozens and dozens and dozens of footprints overlaying on one another. After a little while longer, you look off to the right and you can see just being covered by snow as now these flakes of snow are, are coming down all around you. You can see just with a tiny layer of snow what looked at first to be a mound, but now you can see wood poking out of it. You can see blue paint running along the sides, which Kellick, you know very well as the dark navy blue of the Kaldurian army. You see a massive war cart there, but in a very similar way to what Shreya had described earlier, these vines and these blades of grass have completely come up and consumed it. And as you're walking even further, in the middle of the road, as snow has piled up around you and as the snow gets higher and higher, you begin to have to trudge through the snow once more. But then just off to the right, you see poking out of the snow, three spears coming up out of the snow. Are those spears connected to bodies? Are they, are they near bodies? You if don't we look see closer? Any, okay. But they are driven into the snow. Do they look of Caldurian make or like something else? They do not. I'd like to go look and examine them. Shreya, you see the mm. craftsmanship of your tribe. Nice. And as you inspect them even closer, you sort of poke at one and it sort of springs back and forth as though it is plunged into something underneath the snow. Mm. I think uh, we may be getting closer. I'm gonna like try to remove the blade, or the the tip of the the of this what I'm assuming is javelin, uh, and examine it. Dripping blood. Dripping blood. The snow around you 
starts to become crimson with the drops of blood. This was the Kaldurian Expedition Force. It's my best guess. It would not surprise me if there are more ahead of us. And as you say that, you all look ahead. And you can see five smokestacks along the base of the mountain. Seeing that, I'm going to right hand to right shoulder. Uh, Shalom Hash Obek. Pull it down across my chest, left hand to my right shoulder, pull it down and cast Mage Armor on myself. Okay. Nice. All right, is there a way around? It would take more time than we have. I don't know if we can... What if there's hundreds of them? The footprints look like dozens. There's a lot of them. Lot. And you can see a lot of them, and but most of the, the road is covered by snow at this point. So from the little that you can see of the dirt, there's probably 10 times as many that are covered by snow. I can... I can... Ask Eldra to scout for us and we can take a look. I can take a look. Perhaps they are so preoccupied with this battle we can slip by? Maybe. We can try. We still have our our forged documents from our previous traversal of Maybe. Kaldor. And I'll pull the map out. Maybe we're heading to, to Crave Bond up here. Maybe that's why we're up here. We're trying to do some kind of... Remember back in the day we did the thing where we were your... The pilgrimage. Ex- yeah, we could do that. It's... Um, I don't know how much the uh, followers of Zachriel do that sort of thing, but yeah. um, neither help? maybe do the dwarves, so... <laughs> yeah. Worth a try. Worth a try, yes. Right, are you sure there's no other way to just sneak around? You're the best. It would be difficult. However, if we do come into contact with them directly, I would want to make sure that I do not look like I look right now. Right. Well, let's send... Um, you said you can send... Eldra, right? Yes. Okay. We'll start with that. All right, Seeker, you send Eldra up ahead. I will look. And as you look through her eyes, you can see she's taking each of the currents of air as she goes up ahead. And she flies along the base of the mountain. And you can see just ahead of where you guys are, sort of just around this, this massive hill that leads into the mountain. She sees smokestacks rising up. As she crests over the hill, all of a sudden her view widens, and she sees hundreds and hundreds mm. of soldiers. <gasps> uh, Tents boy. set up, these massive war machines, these war carts, horses, rams, all of these different machines of war. And she can see, climbing up the mountain, carving a path through the mountain, is a smaller group of dwarves with this massive metal and wooden machine carving a path up the mountain making way for the troops behind them and you just hear me because my eyes would be glazed my eyes are glazed over and just oh no there are too many I'm gonna have Eldra also make a perception check for me I think she has advantage if she's a traditional owl then oh yes. yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Well, thank, thank goodness for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an 18 plus. What's her plus? Hold on. Three, so 21. 21. As Eldra is sort of searching and circling around, Eldra notices first, there's a much smaller path. It's mostly covered by snow at this point. But with that perception check, she just notices, and you notice through her eyes, just at the slightest path in and out of the trees carved into the mountain. Very small. Almost unnoticeable. But it is just to the south of where this massive army camp is. And you can see it sort of leads into the direction that you are headed up the mountains. And just as she notices that and turns back around to come towards you guys, everything goes dark. As a massive shadow looms overhead of Eldra. What? As the shadow then passes. Does she 
Does she see what casts the shadow? As you look around with Eldra, you look around and you look up to the sky and at this point, the clouds have once again moved in as the snow is falling. And just barely you're able to see a form move through the clouds. And as you're looking even more and more, just for the briefest moment, a white wing uh. laps out from the clouds before uh. disappearing back. Uh. Like a really big one? Really big one. Okay. Or no. Like with feathers or like... Nah. Like uh, the wing of a white dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Um, I was hoping for just like a big Eldra. So, <laughs> no. Just like a bigger... Just bigger Eldra. Bigger snow owl. Uh, so cool, yeah, great. We're, we're, I <laughs> mega. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna to Eldra real telepathically. Get out of it. Get back quickly. And then I will open my eyes, look around, and say, "Okay, so I have good news. No, wait, I have bad news. Good news, and then more bad news. Okay, lots of soldiers, like way, way more than we want, can, should, will attempt to deal with. Uh, and." They seem to be going up the mountain behind some dwarves using some machinery to cut their way up into the mountain. Mm. They are moving quickly. Mm. Dwarf and desecration. The good news, she saw with her keen eye a, a path. I think we can sneak past them if we are uh, glancing around. If we go quickly and quietly. Not saying any names. And the bad news. There was a really, really big something flying above her. And the... Okay, I'm just going to say it. This is a white wing that looked like it might have belonged to a dragon. A d- I'm, s- I'm sorry. Hmm? A dragon? At this point, dra- would it surprise you that there's a dragon here too? You know... But why? We are in Paradise mountains. Would it don't they live here? I don't here? know. It's an animal. Don't certain It's not exactly an animal. I've never met one. I've never talked to one. I've have just you? studied them. In you study them? I mean, not exclusively. Not not uh, just. You know, there's a certain amount of uh, training you undergo to be uh, a, a clergyman. Yeah. Have you ever seen one? Tablet Vermeer. One thing I've noticed about this time of year is that, well, and possibly the reason you saw that large being. Is that the lands even further north of here, on the roof of this world, the ice expands and it becomes even more cold, so cold that not even the hardiest beings could survive. And uh, we get a little taste here of what that life is like, which is why we try to stay as warm as possible during this time of year. That path, though, I want to ask you, did it seem like it was going uh, alongside the mountain, or did it seem to go into the mountain itself, from what Eldra saw? Was it, it looked like it sort of went up and into the mountain. Um, yeah, sort of like in the direction that you guys are headed. It, it was going kind of up and up the mountain where we need to go, or in that direction from the map. I wasn't thinking of going in this direction. Although, present circumstances, and I motion toward the, the army, may make it necessity. Any aberration from a path that leads us to an army and a dragon, I think we should consider heavily. Well, uh, if this path is the path I think it might be, then it might be able to take us deep into the mountains themselves, to a network of caves that I discovered in my previous departure from this, from these lands. And there may be an exit point from them that leads us to a ridge right behind where my homeland is. We could take that path, though I'm not sure what have, may have taken up residence in these caves that I grew very fond of at the time. That seems meantime, a lot safer. Yes. Better than hundreds and hundreds of Haldurian soldiers. It's 
better than what we know. So our current threats, this big army, a dragon, at least one, uh, dark blades, blades mm-hmm. possibly illithid here, uh, the... A lot this, of show the, and the, from the red wolf. Red wolf, yes. And ho- also everybody right? from Shrya's tribe that's that right. doesn't oh, want right. him there. And basically, anything that we encounter yes, here, they're cold. Probably dangerous. Yeah, uh, yes, the, the elements themselves. So, yeah. you, you probably so just... basically, the only people we can trust is each other. Yeah. Okay, we are doing good. I like this. This, is, tr- this is a good. We're doing good. Yeah. I cast just like a side eye toward Thessaly <laughs> at this moment. <laughs> I hold the eye contact. The All right. Um, is everyone heading up the yes. uh, the yeah. sort of side path yes. that Elder's yes. following? Yes. Okay. Shreya yeah. If, yeah. Shreya, if, if Shreya can can guide us, mm-hmm. I am going to have everyone make a stealth check. Um, Flynn is doing it at advantage. Ooh. Shreya is normal. Uh, Seeker, I believe, is normal. Desley is straight roll. Straight roll. You would have advantage, but yep, it is a straight roll. Coat. Or actually, even today, after you've gotten your long rest from the previous night? Mm. Because, yeah, because my chainmail automatically goes, it's stealth, oh, right? That's it's right. That's yeah. right. Okay. Um, Oma, I believe you are just a straight roll. And Kellek, I believe, is a straight roll. Okay, let's uh, start with Flynn. So I start off with a natural one, but then, <laughs> uh, so I okay. stumble, but then kind of fix myself, but then stumble some more as I roll a three and get a total of eight. Or sorry, yeah, total oh, of eight. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. It's like Shreya. It doesn't feel right. To uh, I rolled a fifteen uh, plus three, which is eighteen. Okay, Seeker. One dirty twenty. Leslie. Seven. Oma. Uh, seventeen. Seventeen. Um, before you say act, what happens? Okay. Um, Flynn, what did you roll? An eight. An eight, Leslie. What did you roll? Seven. I have advantage. I don't know if that. No. Okay. It doesn't. No. No. Um. Which one's more threatening? <laughs> um, I am going to um, notice that Thessaly's armor is jingling a lot and try to tuck it in a way that it doesn't jingle. Um, and I'm going to use bend Ooh, luck. Ooh, okay. Uh, I do. Add, roll a D. I'm going to roll a D4 um, and add that to her roll. Okay. To their roll. Roll high. I don't know how much that's going to help, but... I bring up the average if it's an average. the average, yeah. Yeah. That's a four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's an 11. Let's go. Okay. Let me just double check that really quickly. Make sure there's no additional, like, anything We don't add, add your... Or onto this, right? No, because it's not saving throw. No. It's saving only, throws only for saving okay. throws. Okay. Not for checks. I'm I'm just, like, walking ahead, like, doing my thing. With noticing your... all of this, like, crunching snow and, yep. like, <laughs> armor. I'm just like, ah. Oh. So... You're all sneaking up into these mountains. After just a couple of minutes, some of your legs begin to sort of get uh, get a little bit sore just from the uphill climb and even amplified more by the snow that you're trudging through. You're having to go in between trees and over rocks and through the snow and minutes turn into a half an hour and into an hour of you guys just hiking into these mountains. Every once in a while, you'll look up because there's a shadow overhead. You stop and you sturdy yourselves before the shadow disappears and you continue moving. Oh. Mm-hmm. Ooh. You continue on even further. Another hour. It's approaching about midday. As you look up, and just barely above you, the clouds part for a moment. And you can just see an orange speck in the sky. The sun has almost completely withered at this point. As you continue on, I'm going to have everyone else, or everyone make a stealth check again. Flynn. Uh, 15. Dry. 30, 20. Okay. Seeker. 25. Leslie. 18. Wow. Oma. 23. Nice. 16. 16. Okay. Oh, good job. Go team. You continue moving. We're getting out Unimpeded. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) When you continue on through this path, and after another hour, 
another hour. Try you begin to recognize sort of where you are. And you look off to the right, and you would have missed it if you weren't looking precisely for it, but you just barely see, almost completely covered by snow, the entrance to a cave. Uh, I, I whispered, kind of whisper shout toward the group. Wait! It is here. Mm. Uh, as I turn and face it, and this uh, warmth washes over me, even through the blistering cold, uh, I just, uh, I lean on my on my staff as I motion the party to come behind me. I think this is our way. All right. Um, is, is, the, is everyone going into the cave? Yeah, yeah. follow us right. Yeah. Okay. Um, as you are now no longer moving through the snow, as you make your way into the cave, your feet touch the rock underneath you and you begin to move into this entryway of the cave. As you are now moving into new terrain, I'm going to have everyone roll one more stealth check as they're moving into this new terrain. Okay, Flynn. Well, I roll the worst thing I can roll. (laughs) Nice. Um, So it ends up being a total of seven. Seven? Okay, try it. Oh, no. Another 18. 15 and three. 18. 14. Desley. 13. Okay. I also rolled the worst thing Flynn can roll. (laughs) Um, I... I have an a, a nine. Okay. Yeah. And Kellick. I also, also rolled a one. Which is a total for Kellick of four. <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh, we, how many twos were rolled that roll? <laughs> Ethan, as you all oh, begin you to walk into this cave, as you all begin to walk into this uh, cave, you are all awestruck and memor- mesmerized by the rows and rows of glowing crystals on the walls. Shreya, you are completely refamiliarized with this area once again. And most of you just forget about being quiet. <laughs> As you begin to walk into this cave. Can I uh, do a little descriptor while we're walking? Yeah, sure. Or... Yeah, okay. Go for it. Okay. Um, you see, uh, from what I can tell, uh, there's a vein that runs in this cave that completely covers the walls. And, well, I've only seen this in visions, but I think these uh, crystals that coat the walls of this cave are connected to a vein that runs to the very core of Elbor itself and can commune with Hilduria herself if, if my visions were true and not just the ramblings of my mad brain. But what I do know, because I've seen them, is that fey spirits can travel between the veins of these crystals. And if harvested, I would imagine the magic of which I've harvested one piece as I raise uh, the crystal. The magic within could bring down nations, I would think. However, it does take those who will listen, sift through their twinkling shard songs, and glean from the chaos within the awesome power. And then if you quiet your minds once again, you can hear stronger now like the siren songs of these like shard-like uh, fey kind of singing these wisps of like tiny tendrils of music that again beat on your eardrums and just uh, tickle you very pleasantly to and your core. as you're all listening to this, <laughs> you quiet yourselves and you're listening to the songs around you. And you also begin to hear as wings begin to flap no. and you look to the entrance of the cave and you see sh- a shadow move over the entrance of the cave as you hear wings flap and dropping in front of the cave to Aarakocra drop oh. down to the front of the cave oh. I really thought oh Come boy on, spears in hand oh. Shrey you notice the um, wartime mantle of the armor these scales that are covering them as they move in, and from deeper within the cave, you see two more Aarakocra with similar spears come up around you as they all approach, take a fighting stance, and, po- and um, point their spears directly at all of you. Try uh, I don't suppose these are the ones that don't hate you. Uh, I'd like, can I examine them for what, like, markings they have on their, like, tribal regalia? Sure, um, yeah, looking at them, they, they appear to be um, part of the, the chief's guard. The chief's guard, yes. okay. And 
they look to you and every and they sort of look to themselves and almost noticing that there are no dwarves among you <laughs> they look to each other and their heads sort of cock to the side you hear you hear them say oh good these are not soldiers we have to find out what they're doing here uh in and then in Aarakocran you you uh, uh you I then communicate with them uh greetings my brethren I found this band of worldly travelers they've uh I've come to know them quite well, and they seek, they seek to promote our purpose. They come to do no harm to the tribe or to our chieftain Zuala. Please, we are taking this route through the cave so that we may not come into contact with the encroaching army from the other path on the main road. And you see one of the Aarakocra sort of cock his head to the side, a very similar sort of eagle visage very similar brown to Shraya um, cock his head to the side Shraya as you look to this Aarakocra and you see someone who you had known from your childhood you see Tubo standing in front of you Tubo is that you? I, I hardly recognize oh you've grown he still keeps his spear pointed at all of you, but he drops it ever so slightly. Shraya, you know the enemies we face, and yet you bring these people here. These are not enemies, Tubo. These are newfound friends that are allies in our purpose. Please, lower your spear. I want to hug you. (laughs) And he drops his spear and, like, brings you in for a hug, pats you on the back, and you can just barely hear sort of under his breath. He says... I've had my fill for newfound allies for the day. Mm-hmm. And then as he sort of backs yeah. away, oh, man. and he shakes your hand, he says, how, how are you? It's been some time. It's been, it's felt like total lifetimes to me. And I'm sure it's felt like far too much time in conflict. As you can see, and then I, I point to some of my you know, newfound appearance. I have communed even further with the magics of the earth, but it has given me sight. It's given me sight into the nature of of all beings that find their way on this great land, what the inhabitants call Elbor. I guarantee you, the new friends that I found seek seek to bring to a close the fate and the destiny of what the legends described. Each and every one of them know as I know and as I've come to know where we seek to return. And they all know this too intimately. And I gesture back toward them. Don't you? Are you speaking uh, in common or? I'm, I just, I'm, uh, my hand's yeah. still raised and under my breath I just like, like mutter out of the side of my mouth to Flynn. This seems good, right? Just and he's pointing at us. Oh, yes, uh, I think so. Is Hug- Huggins not some hug. weird yeah. Eric Cochran way of declaring war or something? Trya, is everything okay? What's what's going on, Trya? Why are you pointing at us? Don't you? Yes. And come. Okay, yes. Yes. Now you're happy. Yes, yeah. we do. Yeah. Yeah. Trya yeah. does yeah. not uh-huh. mean yes in your culture. Yeah, uh, you? Of course. Yes, yes. Trya, Ooh. I'm going to have you make a... <laughs> I'm going to have you make Flint. a... Flint, don't say anything. You don't know what's a curse word. <laughs> oh, you're right. Shraya, I'm going to have you make a persuasion check at advantage for me. Okay. Um, that's a grand total of nine. Nine. Okay. I know. No. You see... I know. You see caution come across Tubo's face. Well, you will see. But if your words ring true, I think we should bring you to the chief. I think you would have questions for your allies. This is a strange time, and I'm afraid we need all the help that we can get. Quickly, come with us. 
as Tubo instructs, just with a simple hand motion, instructs um, his fellow soldiers to drop their spears and continue on moving down into the cave. Is everyone else following? We're here to help. <laughs> Let's try a talk, Flynn. I put thumbs up to the one. <laughs> All right. I'll follow, but I want to walk over to Des real quick and just. Uh, it, it is your turn to provide some comfort. She she doesn't like being in caves. She she hates caves. And right. I was set Eldra on your shoulder, mm-hmm. and she's like she's shaking. Like she's not she's not real happy right now. This it's a bit warmer in here. Yeah, and I can actually mm-hmm. move. Snow is up to my my knees. Yeah, tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> as, as you guys continue moving on through these caves, um, you see that the Aarakocra in front of you begin to run at a pretty decent pace oh. before, as they're running down the cave, before their wings expand out and they just barely start to um, move their wings back and forth as their momentum is now carried and their feet just barely um, rise up off the ground as they are no longer running, but they're sort of gliding through all of these caves. And you all have to uh, run in order to keep up with them. But They're so fast! How am I supposed to keep up? <laughs> This seems rather unnecessary. But the good thing is you can all see perfectly as all of these glowing crystals mm-hmm. in the cave surrounding you are providing a perfect amount of light for in here. As you continue to wind through these tunnels back and forth and you see up ahead, there's a split that goes into four different directions and without hesitation, Tubo and the soldiers move into the one to the far left. As it banks up and around and over and back and forth, you continue moving up and throughout this mountain until you can see light at the end of this tunnel. I'm going to whisper over to Tubo and I'm going to say, How were the rest of the tribe permitted to explore these caves? At least when I was around, it was forbidden to go into this this deep into the earth. Um, the last few days, we have been scouting different exit routes for the tribe's young and those who cannot fly. This is one of them. We have had to take serious measures, go against what we were taught, but I I feel this might be a a suitable direction. So please, come. We still have quite a ways to travel. Times must be dire indeed. As you exit the tunnel, you look out, (laughs) and you are running, and you run out of this tunnel, but you all stop yourselves as you almost run completely off the edge of this huge You all stop yourselves, as the Aarakocra instinctually fly and take off. A little but warning next time, huh? Right? <laughs> as most of you cannot fly, you have to you have to come to a halt and take oh. a right and continue up the mountain on foot, Ooh. continuing to follow the Aarakocra. And you can see after a minute, Tubo and the soldiers turn back and see that they're moving much faster than all of you. So they pull back and lead you through the trees and up the mountain even further as- until eventually you can see the trees get larger and larger around you. And you can see the massive roots of some of these trees burying their way into the rocks and into the side of the mountains. The canopies of the trees shelter you from the wind and from the snow. And eventually you start to see these pods, these massive seeds, probably seeds that are 30 feet in diameter buried themselves into the tree. You can see little windows carved out. Uh, Seeing as we're uh, outside now, I'm going to uh, lift my staff over uh, uh, quick quick question. How far can I clock are we at this point from like actually reaching the tribal grounds? You are minutes. Minutes, okay. So as we, yeah, so as we are uh, continuing along toward that final destination, uh, uh, I'm gonna raise my staff, and from the tip of the crystal uh, emanates this like pulsing uh, magenta lightning. Uh, as I cast uh, Skyrite, and I create my like the symbol of my name in the sky nice. above the okay. tribal cool. homeland. Cool. All right. Um, as you do that, the party continues winding up the mountain. Shrey, your your name now lights the sky, and you all continue on. And you continue to see more and more of these pods in the trees. And eventually you can start to see Aarakocra flying in and out of them. These massive hollow seeds buried themselves into the trees. These homes for the Aarakocra. 
as eventually you make your way to the densest part of this forest on top of the mountain. And you can see a series of seeds, probably 15 or 16, all attached to one another. As you can see a gentle glow of fire coming from the inside. As you all approach, you see Tubo and the other warriors fly into a hole that's been carved into one of the seeds. Drya, you know that this is the main entrance to the chief's home. Hmm. Where are we going, Shraya? You could really give us the finer points of this plan. How are we supposed to be ready for what's on the other side of that? As long as we keep our purpose, our true purposes. Uh, uh, how close am I to the other Aarakocra right now? They've flown, They've flown ahead. Ahead. Okay, yes. yeah. As long as we keep our true purposes concealed, I think we'll be all right. They know me. We may not have left on the best of terms. But, if there's one thing they understand and have come to respect, it is true power. And I feel my true power has increased since the last time I've seen them. But but what is this place? Oh, right. This is where I came from. This is where I was raised as a small thing. I used to fly from there to there. That's where I learned how to fly. Uh... That base of that tree is where is where I first ate my first meal. Uh, there's an incredible view from the top of that canopy right over there. Mm. Like, <laughs> uh, I sort of get like lost in a second. I can't, I can't, can't get carried away though. We, we must follow them quickly or else they may think that we are up to something. Mm. I would just like to get up this hill. <laughs> Do any of right. them speak common? I doubt any of them would. Okay, so he'll be doing the talking. It's um, possible that one of them may have, out of necessity, learned it. One sec here. Uh, before we go in, uh, do I have one of those? Yes. So I'm going to reach into my bag and pull out a potion that I have and hand it over to Shreya. Hey. Hey, is this Shreya? the last one? Yeah. This is all I have left, but if it helps bring them together, it's worth it. And I'll hand you a potion of... I have in my notes Silver I have a potion of talking good. Uh-huh. <laughs> potion of talking good. Silver, 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 silver tongue. Silver tongue. Silver tongue. Potion. Yeah, silver tongue. Potion. Potion. Yeah. Over to you. Okay. Before we go in. This is wise. This will give me an ability that I've struggled with attaining my whole life. As uh, <laughs> as long as I recognize do I recognize yes, it as something you do, you know Okay, great. I know what this does. Yeah. Okay, awesome. All right. uh, as I knock it back and suddenly feel <laughs> the ability to communicate much more persuasively. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, man. Saved that yeah, for a good did. moment. So, Shreya, you are able to fly up and fly through this main entrance. The rest of you can see a very, like, ramshackled ladder sort of uh, climbing the edge, uh, cr- climbing the base of the tree to actually get to the lowest seed pod in the tree. Um, so as you all sort of move in, and start climbing into this space. Is there anything you want to do before you actually get into the chief's home? No. Nothing? Okay. Uh, okay. I'm going to, just so I can provide backup if I need to, expletions, uh, draw a line of ashes down my, uh, from my forehead to my nose and cast tongues on myself. Oh, nice. So yeah. that I can understand what they're saying. Okay. Uh, I think I can also... Uh, I can understand any spoken language I hear. Moreover, when the target speaks, me, any creature that knows at least one language and can hear the target understands what it says. All right. So I can gotcha. also communicate with okay. Eric Okra. All right. So as you all head up this ladder and into the home of Chief Zu Allah, you climb into this space and immediately are warmed by the atmosphere in here. It is much warmer in here than it is outside. But you go in and you see this this massive series of what almost looks like bubbles formed out of these seeds and different platforms around carved into the tree and made of the tree. And you see this massive main platform. As you climb up and climb onto this main platform, you see several members of this tribe sort of lined up around this central area. You can see Shreya. You see who you know as the chief. You see sitting there in the middle, sort of in this 
this chair made of the tree. And he's sitting there. You can see a couple of his advisors standing there around him. And you can see Tubo sort of goes and takes his place behind the chief and to his right. You see behind the chief and to his left, which is a very strange sight for you. You see the shaman. You see that now they are standing together. And across from them, just in front of you, you see several creatures that are not Aarakocra. Oh, boy. Oh. You see five creatures of varying sizes. You see one standing in the middle. Gray skin that cracks almost like dirt. You see not wearing anything to, to keep them warm, but you see hair sort of pulled back into a knot. This black, black hair. And you see this sort of earth brown tunic over them. You see an earth genasi sitting there. Next to them, you see a dwarven man. Hair just as black, beard coming down to his belly. You could see him in these dark brown robes. And you can see pieces of armor on him, on his shoulders, with silver accents. Next to him, you see purple skin pointy ears, hair tied back into a ponytail, you see a hobgoblin standing there. On the other side, you see much skinnier, sort of hunched over just a little bit with this massive fur pelt on her back. Face like a feline, you see a tabaxi. And finally, off to the far right, you see a human standing there with this white cloak with a a big fur collar, keeping him warm. Sort of dark stubble on his head and various tattoos all over his head, none of which any of you recognize at the moment. All of these creatures, you look down, and somewhere on their hip, down on their ankle, on their leg, you see a very familiar black dagger. In the middle of this commune that's happening here, and in in the middle of this discussion, you see a little green orb. And it's this sort of uh, almost um, jade-like orb. And you can see several beams of energy floating out from it. And each beam of energy is floating out from the orb and into one of the members who is speaking here. And you see it flows directly into their throat. As the chief speaks in common, which, Shreya, you know that the chief last you left did not speak common. That it sounds like a deal. When would you all like to head off? When would be the earliest convenience for you? And you see the Earth Genasi step forward. I am, I'm very pleased that you've come to this, this conclusion. Um, and he looks around to the rest of the people that he's standing with and says... I think it would be best if we started leaving right at sundown. As soon as you can get your people together, we'll start moving up the mountain. Uh, In common, I'm going to say, if I may, I have returned as the representative of my family. I would like to know what's happening before we make any decision. Shreya, you have no right to speak here. Zuala, it's been a long time. My friend. And then I motioned toward uh, the shaman. Okay. Try Allah. It's good to see you too. I have taken the long path from the sky down to the earth. The sky that turns down and within. From the transitive place into the place that is solid. Like water coming from the sky. Cascading down, feeding the crevices of propagation into the mouths of those who trod. And Elbor herself that grows. And I have seen things. Things that made me realize that my path was a dead end. 
and I wish to now return to the air as well. As do the new friends I've brought to help us. I'm going to have you make a persuasion check for me. And that is at advantage. Hey, yep. Because of the potion. There we go. hey We all meekly nod. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, again, that's just an 11, man. I even with the advantage. Yeah. You dice. Trya, you have desecrated your wings and your talons by leaving this sacred place. We do not need your new friends, as we have found our own way to go back home. Shreya, I will be taking the tribe without you to the plane of air. These new allies have a way to do so, and one that we will take. This is an opportunity we have not had in our time here, and we must take advantage. Your opinion means very little in this council. And let me ask you how it was that you came to know those who promise what it's taken ages to even understand. They have come to us and they have offered us and promised us a way home. But is it theirs to offer? How do you know that they even have the ability? By that I mean to say, is the Sacred One safe? And you can see just sort of in the back of the crowd, Tito kind of moves his shoulder forward through the crowd and steps forward. We have everyone from the tribe here safe. And Tito, and I give him a, I give him a look. Do you trust that these over here who bear this symbol, do you feel safe? Do you feel that you can trust them to perform one of the most sacred rites that we have ever been told of, that we have ever known? And he sort of twitches his head and and he does this, he, he nervously scratches the back of his head and he goes, I think, I don't need, I, it doesn't, I know they can do it, I've seen it, I know they can do it, I know they can do it, I've seen it, I've seen it, I've seen, it. I've seen they, they're able to do it. I know for a fact that they can, they're going to be able to do it. As he finishes this, the Earth Genasi stands up and he turns around and looks at all of you. He sort of reaches into his back pocket and he pulls out a little, about maybe three or four inch long shard of metal with these little flakes of white throughout that apparate into wind and re-solidify into metal. And as he sort of plays around with it, throws it between his fingers, just looks to all of you. Trio, we have a way. And Tito has seen it. And we have come to trust his visions. Are you going to tell me now that we have reason not to trust him? You may stay. You have clearly found your place here in the dirt. But we are going back home as Tubo steps forward. Father, we, I've been, we've been, some of us have been speaking. Um, I can't speak for Shreya or or anyone else here, but some of us have, have found our place in this world. This is our, our home. We don't know the plane of air. I understand that it's sacred to you, but I feel no connection to it. There's no reason for me to, to go. I don't, I don't want to, and there's a group of us. We want to stay. And the chief turns to his son, Tubo, in shock. Fine. If you want to dirty your wings here as well, so be it. I will be taking the rest of the tribe, and we will be going home. 
How long have we talked about this? How long have we, have we dreamed? How long have you dreamed, Dad? We don't, we don't want to go. And you can't make us. As he sort of takes two steps back. And you can see a couple of the other people from this circle, a couple of the other Aarakocra, also take a step back in silent solidarity. Mm-hmm. Zizuala, there are more of us who wish to be stewards of this land, the only land we've ever known, for more time, and perhaps all time. I honor your desire to return, but I don't think in their heart of hearts. And I motion over to those with the dagger insignia. I don't think in their hearts of hearts they truly honor that either. Be careful that your sharp mind be not so easily manipulated by the true forces of chaos. And uh, are there like are there hoods up right now or no? They their don't. Hoods are fully they're down. they're fully yes. down. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm just going to motion toward them uh, and say, as I say, of chaos. The Earth Genasi that's playing with the metal ingot. Mm -hmm. Are they still playing with it or they put it back in their pocket? As soon as he saw that you all had clocked it and um, saw it, he put it back in his pocket. How far away from this individual are we? You're about 15 feet back. Um, I'm going to try and pick his pocket. Yo! Okay. With, with the mage, with the mage, with, hand? with the mage hand. Oh, okay. Go. With the mage hand. I forgot that's a okay. Thing. I'm gonna have you roll a sleight of hand check. All right, dude. No. Is he distracted? Advantage? Uh, he is. He is not. <laughs> okay. At the moment. Fair enough. I'm trying. Oh, that was so good, and then it was. Then it wasn't. Uh, let's see. So that is gonna be. A... Don't worry. The stakes are pretty low here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. It'll be fine mm-hmm. if we. Yeah. It's gonna be a sixteen. Oh, a it's sixteen. Still really good. Okay. Let me. And what level spell is that? Not. It's a. Oh, it's, a it's a cantrip. cantrip. Okay. Oh. Okay. The dwarf sort of turns around and makes eye contact with you as you're doing this, and just kind of reaches his hand down towards his side and snaps <gasps> as he casts counter spell. No. And you can feel the mage hand disappear as the dwarf, as the dwarf looks at you and just very slowly sort of shakes his head and puts his finger up towards his lips. Interesting. Okay. Okay, okay. All right. After he says, after, after as this is happening, I say, don't let this faction of chaos bring you to your doom. For chaos is all they seek to propagate. The dwarves... Of the, from the south, get ever closer. We need to turn our attention to the oncoming conflict that knocks on your door. Do I recognize any of the dark blades? You would have just in passing. Roll a d6 for me. Can't. Six. You would have just in passing seen the Earth Genasi Provel. Um, in some of the missions that you had gone on where multiple prongs needed to be going at something at the same time, where you were coordinating with other teams, mm-hmm. um, you had seen air in council with Provel at times. You don't know much about him, and you have you don't recognize any of the, his teammates. Could I have been able to clock what Seeker was doing? With um, the mage what hand? is your passive perception? Great. I do have to move Great. my dice in my hand. I would um, also like to be clocking uh, that if possible. What's your passive perception? 19. 19? Uh, Kellic sorry, would have... 17. Uh, no. Uh, but, Pick no, a number. It, it is 19. It is 19. 19? <laughs> Kellic, you would have noticed that? 15? What was the rule? 16. 16. 
Uh, that's so you would not have noticed that. What? Did we all see the ingot thing go in? His, we all saw it. Did you, we yeah, all you all saw it. He, saw it. he very clearly showed it to right. all of you. The dwarf is the one that counterspelled. Who had the ingot? Was it the dwarf? Was it Janas? Okay, yeah. got it. The, the, the finger to the lip with the shake head, would I have perceived that as, no, 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 not here, son, or like, there's more going on. Make an insight check okay. for me. Yeah. Mm. Good. Mm. Um, eight. <laughs> eight? Um, this. You see it, you interpret it as not even necessarily malicious, almost like a, hey, come on, not the type of the place. Yeah. yeah. As the chief is sort of heading this conversation, um, you can see the shaman, Triala, can sort of see that it's it's not going anywhere. And he steps forward. Triya, I, d- I don't want this squabble in front of us to distract us from what what the, the core of, of what we want to do is. We want to go home. We have seen through Tito that these people can provide that to us. And we're not gonna, we're not gonna take a chance at waiting another hundred generations to, to have this opportunity again. And we have to come together and and do this for the people who, who are not, we don't want conflict. We see the army traveling up the mountain and we just want to be safe. We want to go home. So I understand the chief's passion in his argument, but we also must come from a place of compassion. And I think you need to understand that you have chosen this place. And, and you feel at home in this place. And just in the same way that you feel a stranger to the plane of air, we feel a stranger to this place. So that is why we need to go. And that is why we need to put our trust into our newfound allies. You may say that they are untrustworthy, but your, your opinion is... Is, is foggy and foreign to us now. So I'm sorry, but we have to go. If I can see what they have caused you to see, that proves that what they're saying is real, then I will join your cause. But I will not be blinded by faith without proof. Without a reason behind it. I will not blindly trust desire. As I motion over to Tito. Show us. I turn toward the uh, black daggered folk. Give us a sample of the magic you speak of. The dwarf stands up and he turns around. Um, Unfortunately, this is not the place that we are able to do this or the time in fact we need a very specific uh, place and and situation we are hoping to at at sunset travel to the highest peak in order to to open up this portal to the plane of air I don't know you I don't know who you are I have no reason to give you a sample of my power if, if you want it you should just know that we are here to help these people. Shrya, if we've learned anything from what happened at the Dakir ruins, they can open the portal. Just don't know if they're gonna close it. In fact, we can safely say that they won't. 
I can hear this from from where he is. Yes. He's whispering I, this yeah, to me. I'm doing my best to, to stage whisper it to Shreya and not have it over her. <laughs> and Shreya, yeah. we know that metal works. It's how we all got back in our own bodies. And what would you say of the oncoming army to the south? And you can see Tubo steps forward and he sort of plunges his spear into the ground and he says, this is our home. We will fight them if we must. Our numbers are not as strong or as experienced, but I, I want to believe that we can drive them off and protect our homes. Either way, we are staying in this place. You all can, can go to the mountain and go back to the plane of air, but this is, this is where we are staying. That's a death sentence. You'll surely die. We will do our best to defend our homes. If retreat is necessary, then so be it. But I just know that that we, we're not going through that portal. Doesn't mean you have to stand here and await certain doom. This is our home. This is the only place that we know. Then what would you do if they were trying to take Adersfeld? <laughs> or where you're from? If you can live to fight another day, you do that. If there's, you come back. If there's one thing I've learned in the last year as we as we get closer to the Long Eve, it's that home is where your people are. And as long as your people are together, then you're home. So, sure, you can split off and, and some can stay here in Elbor and, and some can go to the plane of air. But as long as you guys stay together, the people who stay in Elbor, then you are home. The mountain is our home. We don't know Elbor. We know we know these cliff faces. We know these these airstreams. We know these clouds. Shreya knows lots of places, though. He knows them because he's been there and he learned them and so can you. He made home homes with wolves and he made homes with elves and forests and he helped all of them. There are other places out there. I need a moment with my brethren, my newfound friends. As I, as I turn toward uh, Triala and Zuala, if you would permit me, I want to try to help. If there is even a moment of time that I could briefly convene with my friends. The army is approaching quickly from below the mountain. I don't know how long we'll have here, but we are leaving at sundown. We are heading up the mountain. What time is it now? It is, um, you've probably got about four hours until sundown. Okay. You may convene however long you like, but once sundown comes, those of us who wish to go back to the plane of air are leaving. Then your choice is already made. Do you not fear for the life of your son? When I was made chief, I had to cut ties with all personal bonds and put the well-being of the tribe above anything else. My son has grown into a capable young man. And I will tell you, I do not second guess a single decision that he makes. If his heart is set on staying, yes, I fear for his safety. But I also wish to give him the freedom that the wind grants us all to chart our own path. He makes a decision and I do not question him just as I make one and he does not question me. I don't know how things work beyond the mountains. But here, we try our best to trust each other. I sort of sigh with resignation and 
we huddle? Yeah. <laughs> we, shall, we shall take our leave of you for the moment. Uh, and and I, again, I gesture in reverence to Trila Zuala. Okay. As, um, as we're heading out, I'm assuming, um, Trya, you want to talk? What about going to that spot you said? That was a good view. Maybe we can go. Can we make it there and chat there? If you can climb. <laughs> a bit. A, a little bit of space would help us. Yeah. Probably worth it. And I also kind of want to see the view. <laughs> All right. Um, Shariya, you make your way um, down onto the ground and you lead the rest of the party around a couple trees, through the snow, up a couple rocks, until you get to a tree that is just very precariously perched on a ledge that oversees a massive cliff face. As you walk up, you take the familiar steps to you, taking the rest of the party on one branch to another till you get to the canopy. And as you climb up, you take each branch one after the other until the canopy gets so thick that the branches intertwine themselves, weaving back and forth. And the leaves and the the branches make almost a floor for you to stand on. That's cool. That's cool. As the front of the tree opens up and it looks like you are on the edge of the world. As you look out and you can see miles and miles and miles. Are we seeing the ocean? Are we seeing... You can the see hill? the ocean from here. You can see the river that this you is, oh, this took is, up. This, so this is looking south. This is looking south. Super cool. You can see the river. You can see the wow. forest off to the west. Ah. This is... Amazing. You weren't kidding, Trya. You come from an amazing place. This is where I would dream of what might be beyond that horizon there. Do you want to go? Or do you want to stay? The thing that concerns me the most is their trust of the agents of chaos. If they were to fulfill their purpose they could be deceiving both the tribal shaman and tribal chieftain could bring about a fate even more terrible than I can imagine you all were there when a portal opened right yes you yeah. all witnessed yeah it? That's 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 could people go through it or are they just opening up a swath of Destruction. It looks like they well, were trying to bring something in. Something so. uh, reached toward the portal as though to cross the threshold. But people could, they could technically be telling a half truth. His I people could go through. Suspect I that the Dark Blades probably will open the portal. I think they're, they are manipulating this tribe and Tito, but they have no reason to do a, any harm. I th- I think, I think it's away from the those people. people. I yeah. think the reason, I think the reason they came to them at all was because they couldn't find the threshold key, and Tito's a key. So, in a sense, it's a compromise. They're using them and giving them something they want. So, I, I, I think they will let them go through. But I think you're right, Kellick. I don't think we can guarantee that they'll close it. So they're not gonna. We need to be there to make sure that that we can close it because if there's one thing we've learned these people are incredibly powerful and and we can't fight them while they're opening it but maybe just maybe once it's open we can we can find a way to get them to close it or yeah. or take the key Hi, but what or well I guess what about those that are staying the, the there's an tr- army coming well uh, maybe we can convince them to leave it didn't seem pliable to be committed. They don't know anything. They, they could leave and end up running right back into the Kaldorian army. The only one. Or the yes. white dragon. Yeah, forgot that's there too. What? They're going to take this mountain one way or another. Whether it's dead Aarakocra on the ground or not, they're going to take the, you? the mountain. You saw the army. What would you we have all them do? Glenn, would you, you of all people leave? should respect someone's choice Not to stand and fight. Left. If they want yes. to stay and protect their homeland, there's That's, nothing we can do to sway them. At a certain point, though, it's foolish. Shreya, they don't feel that way. All I know is this. No matter who or what is coming up on the other side, 
with that army. The only one who could talk to them, who they would trust, would be me. And I cannot abandon them. They represent the continuation of a species that's come to know this world and know it intimately. I'm living proof of that intimate connection between what we are and what the world can grant us. It may mean... It may mean that I take my leave and be solely with them. A decision that I do not make lightly. What? No. Uh... Not like this. But we have... We'll have to follow the... The wolves up the mountain, if that's where they're going, it's the opposite. What if some of us stay and some of us We go? will not leave you. Do you care to leave the fate of that portal to a few of us? Um, how, how much time do we have before the army gets here? What, how much time? I think the, the sun down is when they were saying sunset. Do you think the army will arrive? Yeah. And at sunset, they want to leave. Is that right? How many hours do we have till sunset? About four hours. Four. Probably just under four. It would probably be just until sundown. They had that contraption that was making their travel easier. They were just mowing down a path through the mountains. I want to go down there and try to talk sense into the dwarves, tell them not to breach this this line, but we have to... There's simply no time. If you stay, you'll die. I would rather die as one of them than flee. But Shreya, you could talk to them. You could talk them into going to ho- home and staying with, with some of your other family, right? Your extended family, your wolves, or 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 to the Shadow Timberland. You could take them somewhere. Yeah, what's the point of in, you're staying here to continue the bloodline if you're going to have it wiped out? You know, some people would say that going into a manflayer cave and taking their prisoners is really dumb too. You saw the army. I know, but it's not our place to tell them to leave their home. Now, I have an idea though. I was given this and I will produce a card with a blue dragon on it. I was told that uh, it would cause a lot of of trouble for someone if I take my finger and rub it across it and throw it and make a lot of distance between myself and the card. Don't know if it summons a dragon, but it will summon some pain. Maybe we can cause some kind of a diversion or or give the army uh, trouble coming up and buy some time. But we can't be here when the army gets here. We have to go with the Red Wolves to make sure that we can close the portal before the entire world is destroyed. Yeah, there's five of them. I much I hate to say it, I feel like we have to. We might have time to do both. We might be able to find a way to sort of... I mean, they're coming this way, right? So we could sort of... If we want to cause a diversion, we could meet the army halfway. I actually have a means of um, getting somewhere a little more quickly. If, if we want to use it. You're aware. Well, it would probably be one or two people if we want to try and cause a diversion to help Shreya as we go to try and stop the portal. But help help him do what? Help. Help him leave, right? What? What? No, he wants to stay. Perhaps give my brethren, once they are convinced, time to escape. What if you tell them what we're here for? The truth. Maybe they will come help and then try to defend their mountain or whatever they want to do. You want them to give up the 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 march is going to be here at sundown. And if they come with us, they give up their land either way. Shreya, I think you should talk to your friend Tugo. I think you should talk to him and 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 just assess his plan so that you can tell us what you want to do. I I I want to support you, and and I think. I think you need to know what's on their mind. I agree. Although something just occurred to me. 
if the force opening the portal is as strong as the one in the previous portal, no matter what Tubo decides, we may need all the help we can get closing it once it's open. I propose, and it will be difficult, I propose to take Tubo and the rest of the tribe that wishes to remain. Inform them of our true purpose. And then, help you close the portal once it's open. With our strength and additional numbers, it may help that task. You should talk to Tubo yeah. about that because that means him giving up his land. We could use the help, I guess, see what he says. If he's seen what I've seen, if he's seen the army, then he knows that the only option in remaining is death and glory. But perhaps, if I promise them a better life, one that becomes one with the whole of this world, then perhaps they can help us achieve that purpose. And then I could serve as their guide. Should we wait here? Do you need us to come with you? Or is it better that we stay here and let you talk to him on your own? I think it best if I talk to Tubo myself. You're coming back, right? Yes. You sure? Say so you're coming back, right? Yes. Okay. Right, we'll wait here. And I'll just like walk right. off. Try, you're going to find Tubo? I'm going to go find Tubo, yeah. Okay. Um, you go down into the village and you see that Tubo is there um, gathering people, mostly sort of the younger of the group of the tribe. Um, gathering them all together, um, you know that this tribe is not one of too many worldly possessions, but they are gathering what they have, gathering each other, and you can see the group that Tubo has has amassed that is going to stay in Elbor um, as you fly up towards him. Is it is it is it a band of like like how how many of the, this younger segment of the tribe are are present? Like, is it what kind of force is it? You can see that there are about at this point maybe forty. Okay. Oh no. Um, I sweep up uh, in a flourish to Tubo, uh, and uh, Tubo, a word. Yes. You've seen the armies that approach. Yes. I have. You know what their weapons of war can exact in terms of the level of destruction they're capable of. We've seen it. I've seen it. We've been fighting it for generations. I have, yes. I don't think we will have any effect. As he looks around to the 15 Aarakocra of the group that are standing there holding spears. Let me tell you, I think there is a third way. We could stand here and fight and die in glory, defending our homeland. Or, we could close off this area once and for all, give it back to the Earth, even though the Earth we give it back to will soon be desecrated by their fell purposes. But you must know, there is an even more fell purpose that lurks to the North. There is a power of chaos amassing in this world, Greater than the Kaldurians. Greater than the giants who roam the deepest corners of this world. There is a fell purpose stirring to gather nothing but chaos and to burn all in its wake. You must know this because that very chaos may be unleashed when the elders of our tribe finally get their way, as the portal they seek to open may also be a portal for this untapped monstrous chaos to flow into this world. If you want your purpose to match up and line up with what can actually save the parts of this world you don't even know yet, the majesty that you could only dream of beholding, 
then I offer you my hand. And I give you my spears, my javelins. And you can trust that I can teach you the true nature of all this world has to offer. But first, we must defend her. We must defend Elbor from these agents of chaos. Will you join me? Shrya, we have children here. Shrya, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm, I'm helping these families and I don't, I just don't, I don't see it anymore. I put up a good show for my father, but we have children here. We can't go marching towards agents of chaos and, and things raining down fire upon this world. We have children here and, and at the end of it all, we just, we, if, if we want to keep our place here in the world, we need to go. We need to flee. And my fear is that when we descend down the mountain and when we get to the world of Elbor, my fear is that it will be just as dangerous of a place as, as staying here facing an entire army because we don't know the world. None of us have been there. But we have to, to take the risk. We don't know the world like you do. We simply don't. And maybe it's time. Maybe it's time I tell my companions that I need to give back to those who wish to remain. What if we left this mountain not as exiles from a world that doesn't want us, but as new family new growth into a world that could welcome us. What if, what if we could create new traditions, teach the children new ways? What if we could enter this world as if it were a world that could welcome us and not a world that seeks to stomp us out? I think a lot of us have been waiting for just that opportunity. Well, then it may take some trust. And it may fall... It may take falling down. Several times. And following the long path down. From the sky to the earth. But I think I can help. We must forge our own path. We must find our own way. Stay here. The caverns that we arrived here in will find... will find us seeking safe passage and gaining safe passage. Okay. I will gather up the rest, but we will wait here for you. We don't have much time. I must inform my companions of my new plan. Okay, we will be here. As I uh, find my way back up to the perch. Okay. Uh, the view. The rest of the party is there. Well, as you can imagine, it was very difficult to speak to them. It was very hard to move them from their course. But he... You were able to? You were They're going to go, right? They're going to stay alive, right? We have found a, a third way. A different way. They wish to remain on this great land of Elbor. And I see in their eyes the exploration and the thirst for seeing more of this world that I knew then, and which I want to impart to them now. Unfortunately, this may mean that I part ways with all of you and cannot seek to help you close the portal. No. Though I do wish the best of fortunes as you do. 
I cannot abandon my people who wish to remain here. No, the, no. they'll be fine. They can fly away. They can fly into a world of confusion. They can fly into a land they know nothing of. With me as their ally, they have the chance to become more than they ever thought possible. You're leaving us. I do believe it is the only way. If those who I descended from do finally make their union and come back to the elemental plane of air, then we will be all that's left of our kind in this land. And I will not have the remainder of my kind flying into nothingness, into an abyss of confusion. They must know what I know so that we can help in our own way to repair this world. It's true that the forests of this land are each uniquely dangerous. If it's not Chath running around killing sentinels in one, it's spiders and seep in darkness in another. And uh, I think Alma's point rings very true. You've made homes with wolves and elves and us in a goopy void. <laughs> You're worldly, Shia. I uh, promise you, Shia, we'll, we'll shepherd your people, the ones that wish to leave Elbor. We'll shepherd them safely to the plane of air. And we'll close the door behind them. Whatever it takes. I uh, look up towards Dry and just wipe my eye, uh, clear a tear. Um, I don't like it. But I get it. I understand. As you once told me, to our roots we are bound, but they might also set us free. When do you go? As the army approaches, there can be no next day if we choose to remain here. We must leave as soon as possible. But before we do, I hope you always remember, as you have taught me, the dance of the interaction between the light and the dark, between discord and harmony. It's a dance I have learned adventuring with all of you. That up till that point I'd lost my patience for. For I knew you, us, our happy band of Windcross adventurers. I will always know what that is. I will carry it with me. That all is never truly lost. And that even closed hearts can open again and find a friend. Kellick. I will miss our reflections on the nature of truth and choice. Olma, I will miss the fire that burns in every speck of your being. Seeker, I will miss your innate ability to know the path ahead and find it grain by grain. Thessaly, I will miss your ability to never give up, even when you're most at odds with everything around. And Flynn, 
I think perhaps I may miss most flying with you. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you, friend. Just give him a big hug. Pull him in. When that hug ends, I walk over, extend my hand for a handshake. And uh, when you clasp my hand, you will feel a vial of ink. Mm. Oh, nice. What's it? This. Don't be a stranger. I will check, I promise. You know, this isn't the time. As I wipe more tears away from that. <laughs> but one just quick fly around. For old times' sake. I hold my hands on in a deep pose. Just be, be careful. We're very high up in the air. I trust him. Yes. Let's go. While, they, I, uh, while they're on their flight, I know we're in a tree. Um, would there have to be any acorns in this tree? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there would. <laughs> uh, yeah, you see some of them, like, uh, there's a little bit of coating of, like, frost and snow on some of them. And as you reach down and pick one up, it's very easy to pluck off the tree. Great. I'm going to hold on to that and warm it up in my hands while they're flying until Shreya gets back. And Eldra, awesome. Eldra is going to take off with them. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Shreya, as you are flying around, banking through the air, feeling the breeze underneath your wings. Flynn, you're feeling the, the cold rush of air um, over your face. You're feeling the, the rush of when Shreya dives down, that sort of lifting in your stomach and pulling back up that soreness in your shoulders after a couple of minutes um, of just holding your arms out, you look over and you see Eldra making the same curves and turns and, and pathways through the air yeah. as you approach and land back down on the tree. Oh, man. I'm gonna miss that. I'm going to miss you being there to witness it with me. We've done a lot together. Yes, we have. I, um... I hope... I hope the Iron Light has helped... Um... Has helped... You, um... I'm gonna miss you, man. It's helped me. You've helped me. And I wipe more tears. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Maybe I can hold on and I'll go to my bag and I'll open it and I'll pull all my books out and I'll start looking through them and there's something in here. Oh here. Then I'll take um Ilinar's bestiary. There's a lot of information in here. Um I'm sure. I haven't looked at it. <laughs> <laughs> but take it with you. It if you run into any beasts or study it, what I It'll help. This is uh, an irreplaceable piece of your knowledge. I, I couldn't possibly take this from you. And I, I reach down, I pick up Chad's book. Oh. I have huh? another. Oh. We'll be okay. Please take this. It'll make me feel like you're going to be safe. Because I'm not going to be there to protect you any, anymore. Thank you, Flynn. And I put, my, I put my hand on his shoulder. And I say, I have the utmost confidence that you will ascend. You will ascend to being as powerful as you know you can be. It's gonna be different with you not there, though. I know. And I'll uh, start to pull my books together and put them in my bag, and I'll I'll see my bestiary. And I'll pause and actually, for good measure, and I'll open the book up to my very first page. <laughs> and I'll rip it out of there, <laughs> and I'll hand it to Shreya. Um, this is about giant spiders. And it was the first <laughs> thing I wrote in here. And I think since you were there all those times ago, it's only right if you take it with you as well. Thank you. I will always look at it and remember. Remember our times together. And know that no foe is too great. Yeah. No matter the size. True. And I uh I gestured toward him and uh 
I trace his outline with like this in a sparkler kind of way that I wrote my name before. <laughs> I trace his outline uh, and uh, then tip the crystal to my forehead as if I'm taking like a mental snapshot of that. I'm going to step over towards the both of them and hold out my like hand warmed acorn. Traditions, right, Trya? And I'll hand the acorn to him. Thank you. Growth always finds a way. Mm-hmm. As I grab, as I take hold of it and and hold it close to my heart. I know sometimes the uh, world feels foreign and strange to you, Shia, but in our time together, I've often felt you were the only sensible one of us to talk to. I, uh, and I just look down at my, my palm with the, the, the symbol burned into my hand. I don't know what is in store for gods and Adoria, what she has in mind for you, but once the long eve has passed, I'm certain the light will shine upon you, brighter than ever. I believe. I believe in you and all of you. And I believe that we will all find our way toward that bright light of everything new that's to unfold. Yes, you're right. And as for making any amount of sense in a foreign land, if I can pass on anything in that regard, what is it to make sense in a land you don't know, but to not be asleep with its inhabitants, being out of joint with time, might give you a clue as to its true nature, and toward the nature of the nature. And then I bow my head. I bow mine as well. I grab the sigil on my chest and bow my head. And uh, with a flourish and uh, flip in a corkscrew and a uh, uh, bellowing uh, uh, to almost to the approaching army as well as to the chief and to the agents of repair uh, I just let out a, a a final call like a as I uh, make my way back toward Tubo and the younger people in the tribe All right. and as you fly down below the canopy you make your way back towards Tubo who has now gathered everyone there in a group and you can see some young some older but this new tribe now and you swoop down and you see all of them spread their wings out and as a big gust of wind takes up on them you see them all take to the air and as you stride along the same gust of wind the pack begins to move down south. And as you're flying alongside them, an extra current of wind pushes you underneath your wings and pushes you out to the front of the pack. As you fly towards the south, the rest of the party looks on to these Aarakocra flying to the distance. And just as the final sunset of the year crosses the horizon, you all lose sight of Shreya. And that is where we're going to end this episode.
we're going to call it right there. Thank you all so much for listening, and we can't wait to see y'all again next week. Bye, nerds. Bye, Bye nerds. nerds. Bye, Bye, nerds. nerds. Hey, nerds. If you liked that episode, be sure to like, share, and subscribe across all platforms. We'll see you next week.